to the youth program run through Solferino um, Society and has a lot of experience having worked overseas and with a diverse group of people. It's a joy to have him. I had him come back about a year and a half ago to talk on something else. But I'm wondering, Henry, if you wouldn't like to introduce yourself and let me know what I've left out. <laughs> Thank you, Jill, for the for the amazing introduction. And I'm very, very happy to, to be here again. I'm I, I always like to talk to people from other places and just share a little bit of the experiences we have here and there. And I also like like to listen to other experiences. I like to learn. So uh, as Jill said, said I, I'm Henry, I'm Henry Cáceres. I'm part of the IFRC Solferino Academy. I don't know if you have heard about Solferino Academy, but it's basically the innovation, the global innovation hub of the of the IFRC. The, the academy exists to support uh, uh, volunteers, staff, uh, uh, governing people, uh, national societies, regional offices, reference centers to try to find creative uh, ways to solve complicated problems. And we try to put on the table uh, other, perspe other perspectives and also provide new approaches and tools so our very old movement can start trying to address the, the uh, challenges uh, in a different way, in a way that is more inclusive, in a way that is more uh, that 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 uh, consider more the potential of uh, people in communities uh, to solve themselves their problems. So basically, we exist for that. Aside of that, as Jill said, I started as a volunteer many, many, many years ago when I was 15. I was a teenager when I joined Red Cross, and uh, I, most of the time I was involved in, in youth programs, in youth projects, but also working in other aspects. Actually, one of the things that I used to do was learning something in my university and start making some experiments in, in the National Society. Fortunately for me, the National Society allowed me to, to do some of those experiments. Time to time I got in trouble as, as any young people, but I, I I would say that that's the why I I, I ended up in the in the in the Solferino Academy doing innovation. Uh, I like video games. I love video games. So if you have a suggestion of any video game that I should try, please feel free. I'm always happy to to try new things on that on that area. Or if you want uh, to suggest any other thing to do, just let me know and I will be more than happy to go and experiment uh, wherever you recommend me. As I said, I like to, to, to learn, I like to experiment and yeah, basically that's me. So I don't know, Jill, if you, if I well, start I or... I, Yeah, I had a question for you, which I ask many people. When you were a teenager, when you were 15, what did you want to do when you grew up? Oh, that, that that's a really good question. Um, when I was 15, um, I wanted to be a, a football player, a soccer player. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a big uh, soccer fan. Actually, I usually go to the stadium like every Sunday or every two Sundays when the team I'm fan of plays here in the in the city. So I, I wanted to be like that. But after that, uh, I was amazed of what astronauts do, but uh, my my journey didn't take me to that place. But th those were my true, let's say, dream jobs. I wanted to be an astronaut when I was a, a little kid and then a soccer player. But uh, I ended up doing anything else or something else that I would, I have to say, I'm very passionate about. So yeah, I'm happy with what I'm doing now. Wonderful. Um, so would you like to describe what you do currently? And um, I don't know if you have any videos of that you would like to share or any photos that you would like to share or slides that you would like to share about what Limitless and Solferino does. Yeah, um, I was always amazed when I went on the Solferino um, Academy website where I would find avatars instead of people's faces. I was <laughs> like, what is this? I want to know what they look like. <laughs> so uh, that's just um, 
sort of leads into the wonderful innovativeness and um, creativity that exists in Solferino. So please go ahead and describe what the Solferino Academy Limitless program does. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much for that, Jill. And and actually, I'm going to start connecting with what you just said, because it it was the same for me when I uh, first learned about the Solferino Academy. I went to the to the website and started looking for what the Solferino Academy is, and I found the exact same thing. Instead of pictures of the people with uh, very fancy descriptions or things like that, uh, I saw some emojis uh, and, and and things like that, and I I realized in that moment that Solferino Academy is not like a traditional space of the IFRC or the movement in general. Um, and I and I, be, I started building an idea of what the Solferino Academy might be, and when I had the opportunity to to meet uh, Sean, who is the the head of the Supreme Academy. Actually, he is the global uh, head of innovation for the IFRC. I understood why. And if you had the opportunity to know Sean at some point, you will notice that he is like that. It's funny, but I say he is. I, I say like he is like a, a, one of those. A crazy scientifics from that you see in the movies because he's the one that push you to do many different uh, and interesting things. And and that was uh, uh, replicated as part of the culture of the Solferino Academy. So if you have the opportunity to, at some point, have connections with the Solferino Academy, you are going to notice how different it is in, in, in comparison to other uh, areas of the IFRC. But, but as uh, Jill said, I'm here to talk to you about the Limitless Academy. So I'm going to share a, a presentation. I hope this is not very boring for you. So I'm going to try to make this interesting. Just let me find here. Okay, I, I guess that you can you can see my screen now, right? I can yeah, I, yes. I think cool. Great. So. This is the Solferino Academy, and as you can see here in this image, this is what we try to to highlight or to promote in 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 the in the Limitless Academy. We want to promote uh, youth participation. We want to promote youth diversity. We want to promote youth ideas. We want to promote youth leadership. So basically, when you when people start talking about the, what the Limitless Academy is, uh, people might have in their minds that Limitless is a safe space for young people to develop their skills, to materialize their ideas, uh, to uh, start uh, or to, to find those things they are passionate about and and turn it into some uh, specific actions to to do something for the communities they live they live in. So basically, the academy wants to to unlock this power that youth have to to impact in the life of of other young people in the life of, of communities, but also the the, the this 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 uh, power they have to somehow promote transformation in the national societies. And uh, somebody might say, well, yes, but how a single person or a group of young people can change something in national societies, especially if you know how complicated national societies might be. But after running this program during two, two editions, we have realized that uh, if we give young people the space and the tools and the opportunity to do something, they not only have the power to impact in the life of the people in communities, but also to create some kind of snowball inside the national societies and start making this snowball make some changes inside. Of course, as 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 usual, uh, as with everything in the in organizations, it's not easy. 
but it's possible and they have shown how uh, how a group of people can can transform uh, what a national society is uh, this time the limitless academy is focused on climate and environmental crisis and why we choose this 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 topic for this for this edition because we realized that one of the things that young people are more passionate about is climate and environment and they are really willing to do whatever they can whatever it is in their hands to try to make something to address the impact the negative impacts of climate and environmental crisis in their communities uh, and the other thing is that they understand uh, this crisis from a different perspective, uh, different than what the adults normally uh, see this crisis. So it's really interesting to see how, what happens when we uh, connect younger people with, with the older people and we create this intergenerational conversation about a uh, climate and environmental crisis. Basically, Limitless is looking for three main things. The first thing is to implement and scale projects. We know that young people have ideas, that is a fact. But sometimes what happens is that in some places or in many places, especially in the global south, uh, the culture or some national societies have this idea that uh, young people doesn't have enough experience or knowledge to start leading or doing something. It is sad to say that uh, in 2024, there are still places where young people doesn't have the opportunity or the uh, right spaces for developing their ideas. So one of the things we wanted to do was basically that, uh, support young people to implement and scale their ideas. In this time, responding to climate and environment, but in the first edition, uh, we focused on uh, addressing the different challenges uh, that COVID-19 uh, brought with it. Um, and we don't know what is going to be the next topic we are going to be working on the next edition of the Limitless Academy, but the, 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 objective, the objective is going to be the same. Bring young people this opportunity for them to lead, to develop, to design, to implement their ideas, and we want to support that. The other thing we wanted to do is uh, uh, that we want more innovators. Uh, we know that we have a lot of people with many, many, many ideas in their heads, but not always they have the tools or the knowledge or the motivation or the inspiration for materializing it. So through Limitless, we want to inspire a generation of people that is willing to learn about innovation and become ambassadors for their national societies, for their communities, or for the AFRC, and they start inspiring and motivating other young people to believe in their dreams, in their dreams, to believe in that it is possible and that it is necessary to start doing something at all, and not only wait for for orders or wait for somebody else to tell us what we might do to address any problem. And the and the final one is that we believe that the only way in which innovation can uh, can flourish in national societies is by creating an innovation ecosystem. So uh, what we want to do is help national societies to understand better how important it is both to understand more about innovation and start implementing it, it in the national societies and at the same time allow young people to participate, allow young people to create, allow young people to get crazy about their ideas and guide them to turn that crazy idea into something that is formally uh, applicable in, 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 in any place they are working. That is basically what we are working with Limitless. And as you can see, 
the task is not uh, is not easy because we have to face many different challenges because it's not it's not the same to work with the national society here in the americas and to work with the national society in the pacific for example the culture is different the needs are different but they have something in common all these national societies have young people acting as volunteers and something that is in the, these young people have in common is that they have dreams, that they have needs, that they have ideas, and we want to help them to interconnect that and help them to address though that energy into something that is meaningful for them and for the communities they belong to. In the first edition of the Limitless Academy, we had this impact, the one that you can see in the in the in, in the screen. Uh, this time, we, as I said at the, at the beginning, we are in the very middle of the, of the Limitless Academy of the second edition. We have basically reached the same number of people, but the number of people with the indirect beneficiaries is over a million people. And that is an amazing number. And not only because of the numbers, it is also a great thing because of the stories behind the numbers. Something that I learned when I when I joined the Solferino Academy, and uh, something that Sean always uh, tells to me is the, or tells to the team is that numbers are important, but more important than those numbers are the stories that are behind them. So we have over uh, three thousand uh, three hundred thousand stories. And if we take the extended number of the indirect beneficiaries, we have over a million stories, uh, that, uh, over a million lives that have been impacted by the projects created by these young uh, people around the world. And I always like to show this because uh, the projects that these young people are leading are a little bit small, let's say, because they are just beginning. But if we put together all the efforts that all these young people are 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 are, are doing, the the impacts are going to increase uh, exponentially. And that is why it is really important to allow young people to participate and materialize ideas. As I said, this time. We have over a million people impacted so far. We have reached more national societies. We have financed, uh, we have funded uh, more projects. Actually, we have funded uh, so far 905 projects, which is, which is a lot. And why Limitless is that impactful? Why Limitless has been, uh, can, has become in something, um, very popular around the movement is because of the way in which we work. The approach that Limitless has uh, focus mostly on capability building and mentoring, but also uh, it focus on uh, inclusion and diversity and participation. And we create like a little oasis inside the movement for these young people to start doing things. Nobody is going to point to them uh, because they commit a little mistake or because they fail in the process. We try to show to them that failing, that, uh, uh, that stumbling is part of the process of creating or doing something different. That's why we provide in this process peer, peer mentoring and also expert mentoring. So these young people are always with somebody to their side, uh, walking the, the limitless journey with them. We also provide to them training on innovation. And you may say, yeah, well, training is important. Yes, but we have been looking for ways in which we can uh, make this training more accessible, considering the the access to internet or, or the access to 
to electricity in some places. Some of the participants doesn't really have electricity 24 hours a day in the places where they live. So we, we've been trying to do something that is accessible for everybody. That's why for this edition, this training on innovation was totally, was entirely run uh, on WhatsApp and WeChat. And that was a big challenge because we had 6,700 people from all over the world uh, that speaks 14 languages, all learning at the same time in, 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 on WhatsApp and on WeChat. And uh, even if we have to still uh, refine this approach for training, it proved to be successful because everybody could access to those trainings uh, despite the place where they are. And even those people that didn't have electricity 24 hours a day, or even those people that didn't have access to, to internet 24 hours a day, or even those people that have a very, uh, very basic uh, cell phone, even them had the opportunity to access to this training, to access to this knowledge. And of course, the seed funding part. We believe that giving young people some financial support to develop their initiatives is a key aspect of the, of the program. But there is a difference. We don't ask them to tell us how they are spending their money. This time, we decided to transfer the money directly to their hands. We used MoneyGram and Western Union for doing this, uh, and it was a challenge, but we wanted to know what happened if we give the money directly to them and we tell them, hey, you don't have to send to us any receipt, you don't have to send to us any financial report. We only want you to know that we trust you that we want to support you. And what we only want from you is you to take this money, uh, apply, uh, spend, uh, spend it on, on, on your project, use the knowledge and the, and, the, and the support we are giving to you and send back to us a video explaining what you have done so far with what we have done. And uh, something that we were worried about was what if any of them come back to us and didn't apply and they just disappear. The reality is that 90% of these young people came back to us, send their video report, tell us the story behind their idea, and only 5% didn't show up. But we still don't know why. We still want to discover what happened with this 5%. In some cases, it was because uh, something happened in, in their country, it was because something happened in their lives, but as I said, it proved to be successful to just support the participants directly without going through the national societies. Of course, national societies have something to do in that process and they support their volunteers, but the volunteers proved to us that we can trust them and do something like this. So this was amazing. This was really amazing to see how, what could happen when we do something like this to the, with the volunteers. Um, so basically with Limitless, we want to do something like this. Maybe you have seen something similar in other places, uh, but you have to know that this is not something traditional in the Red Cross, Red Crescent movement. The traditional way of doing projects here in the in the movement, uh, something that they that have started changing, is that you get the money, you design the project on the desk, and then you go implement, uh, even if it has been accepted or not by the community. Sadly, it's still the same in many many countries. So by sharing this to with the young people or by teaching this to the young people we want to show this new generation of future uh, red cross red crescent leaders that there is a different way for doing the interventions we do and we tell them okay the first thing you have to do is go to the community understand better what is happening there uh, and then try to understand better and start 
generating some ideas, create prototypes, spend a little money in those prototypes, test in the communities. And once you have uh, confirmed that your design is accepted by people and that that design creates something meaningful for them, then you can spend uh, all the money you want in, in, in implementing a big project. It's a different way of, of, of doing things. And you might uh, get surprised of the big amount of people inside the movement that uh, are not really uh, supporters for this kind of approaches. But we've been doing our best to try to push and to try to show this as, a, as an alternative for the work we do in the Red Cross. It's a, it's a, a traditional innovation process, basically. The Limitless Academy basically works in phases. So the first part with the first phase is about inspiring people. We want to tell, to share with them stories. We want to share with them knowledge and we want to tell to them, hey, if there's something you want to do, use this information, inspire uh, from these people and, and start doing something. Then in phase two, they generate basic ideas, they generate basic prototypes and start learning this process of doing innovation and test that innovation. In phase three, they go to a more advanced process. Basically, they have to build a more advanced prototype functional if possible, and then go again to the communities and start trying something uh, with that with that, uh, with that prototype. Uh, at this stage, participants not only have uh, support from peer mentors, they also have access to expert mentors that guide them through the process. Yes, uh, Jill. This is amazing what you do. And I saw in phase four, they get a, a grant to be able to provide this. I'm wondering if you have, Henry, a, a video, like a three or four minute video that you can show of an example of what, of what somebody has done in a national society in terms of an actual project rather than just speaking to it. I don't know if you do. Yeah, actually, I have uh, two videos that I want to show you about what happened in the last uh, edition of of Limitless? We had two, we had ten winners in the last edition, and I'm going to show you two videos from from that edition. And if we have at uh, the time, I want to show you one more from uh, from this edition. So I just wanted to let you know that this is what the Limitless Academy is. This is how the Limitless Academy works, and uh, through this process, we want to impact in the life of young volunteers around the world. So these young volunteers can impact the lives of uh, people in the communities they live in. So uh, I don't know if you have any question about what the Limitless Academy is before uh, showing to you what uh, what we what the, the volunteers have done. Feel free to raise your hands or unmute yourself or um, just um, ask the question in the chat if you prefer. Is anybody confused about what the Limitless um, Academy is? And um, can you tell us a little bit about Solferino Academy? Because you mentioned that first but didn't mention what it, it it sort of, what does it do separate from the rest of the IFRC? Yeah, uh, as, as, I, as I said at the beginning, the Sulfurian Academy is basically the, the, the innovation hub of the IFRC. Uh, we exist to help national societies and, and regional offices and uh, reference centers to do things different. Uh, you, you will get surprised of how many people come to us and say, hey, help us to, to do something, something different in our organization. So we basically exist for that. We try, we try to, um, to challenge 
the the traditional thinking of the organization and somehow we kind of try to break a status quo and to bring new ways of doing things uh there's a question in the chat yeah i just saw it how are young people motivated prior to inspiration um we we might say that we do some kind of uh, uh, activation or marketing strategy. So we start showing uh, videos or we start showing short stories. Uh, this time we created the stickers. So what we did first is that people start thinking, oh, what what, what is that limitless thing? Uh, why is everybody talking about that? Because at the very beginning, we started sharing many uh, many communicational assets without giving that much context, only using the, the, the limitless branding, but without using the limitless logo, only talking about climate, only talking about environment, only sharing stickers, and but everything under the same, the same, uh, the same branding style, but without using the logo. So that how that was how they got mot uh, motivated because we targeted people who already have some kind of interest uh, in uh, uh, on climate and environment. Then once they have, once they have, uh, uh, once they have. Uh, they have identified somehow with the campaign we were doing. We started using the limitless, the limitless logo, but connecting that with the stories behind the Limitless Academy. So we started sharing uh, spaces where previous participants started talking, or we started doing uh, things where community members started sharing the uh, the impact of the project created by a young by a young people, and we also show to them uh, other successful stories from other uh, young volunteers. For example, in the first edition, we had a participant from Nepal who created some kind of vertical farming and she used that idea and now she has created her own her, her own uh, her own business she, sorry uh, yeah her own business and uh, and she is a kind of successful uh, business in this moment in Nepal and she has been in the news on the television and she has been invited uh, to to many places to share the, her story. We have also another story from from Kenya where a young volunteer created his own uh, uh, organization called Awake and he's been impacting the life of young uh, poor people in uh, in Kenya through education. It was that impactful what he has been doing that he has been recognized as innovator of the year uh, in 2022, if I'm not wrong, and he has also been invited to other places. Uh, that, that is the kind of thing that limitless uh, that limitless. Uh, reach in when, when they are working with the young people. Uh, the recognition Another, of these young people. Uh, so about the recognition. A, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I saw that one. So uh, the recognition for these people has different different phases. For example, this year uh, we included the opportunity to go to Geneva to present their innovation in the General Assembly. Uh, of course, we couldn't take to all of them, but we make a little competition inside the Limitless Academy to choose the four, the, sorry, no, four, five, the five more promising projects from the from the current cohort, uh, and we take them to Geneva with all the expenses paid, and uh, uh, so they have the opportunity to present the 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 innovation in front of the whole General Assembly. Aside of that, we gave them some certificates with uh, academic endorsement. We are having the support from yours, so from some universities in different places in the world. So we give to them that kind of support. But aside of that, there is a, 
there is some kind of additional uh, benefit they have after going through this process because they finish the program being a different person uh, in comparison to the beginning of the program. So once the program finishes, they start doing other things, uh, promote other things in the national societies or in their countries. So themselves open new opportunities for, for them. Uh, and we have experienced many, many of them. Um, we don't recruit through uh, school. Uh, this, this, this Limitless Academy uh, during the last edition and, the, and this edition was open mostly for people that are part of Red Cross and Red Crescent. This edition, we included something where uh, we included something where uh, members of other organizations or community members can participate in the program as long as they have some kind of formal formal relationship with any national society in the world. We want and we are exploring. It is not decided yet, but we are exploring the possibility of making the program more accessible for other people that are not Red Cross or Red Crescent uh, volunteers. Uh, if that is the case, in that moment, we would approach to, I don't know, schools or, or college or, or something like that to try to bring more people into the program. But we try to make it uh, as diverse as possible. The main idea is that all the projects are led by people between 18 and 30 years old. Uh, but we tell them, hey, if you have friends in your uh, near circle, uh, from your university, from your school, or from your work, uh, invite them to participate, and they can be part of your team. In that way, we can do two things. We can kind of motivate or inspire other people to join as volunteers of Red Cross or Red Crescent, but also at the same time, we bring to these teams uh, new knowledge or different uh, different perspectives or different approaches. Uh, what else do we have here? Yes, actually, uh, it is really, really amazing to work something like this with young people because we realize that young people, the only thing that need is a safe space where they can develop their ideas. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, the first video. I, I this one is from from a national society that speaks Spanish, but it's a really great story that we had. This 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 video has subtitles in English, so you you will be able to to see it. And I, I really hope there is no problem that I show this video that is in Spanish first. Just give me a second and I will share my screen. Okay, so this is one of the projects that won the Limitless Academy uh, in the first edition. And as, as I said, that edition was about addressing the problem, the addressing the challenges related to COVID-19. Just give me a second, how do I? Okay, give me a second. My, my computer freezed. Just a second. Oh, but okay. Wait. Okay, it's working now. Okay, let me know, please, if you can see my screen sorry i guess i didn't share with with we sound. just seconds ago got your screen and then it disappeared yeah no i guess that it's working sorry i i know i'm not usually use a uh, team so sometimes now it we got it trouble. now we've got it okay cool great so as i said sorry this is this is the the video from a team one of the winners on the on the first edition of the limitless academy they worked on mental health they created an initiative based 
on gamification. Actually, it's the first uh, initiative in the whole story of the National Society that used gamification. So I hope that you enjoy this, this limitless story. La salud mental es un problema silencioso que impacta a la población mundial. A raíz del COVID-19 se ha hecho más evidente los defectos que el tiempo pandémico dejó. Desafortunadamente, según datos de la UNICEF, uno de cada diez de ellos también enfrentará un trastorno de salud mental y en su mayoría no recibirá la atención que requiere. Esto no es un comercial. Esta es la realidad que vivimos a partir de la pandemia, donde las y los adolescentes vieron afectaciones en el ámbito académico, emocional y social. Con todo esto en mente, nosotros creamos tu dilo. Como vendedores de Cruz Roja Ecuatoriana, creamos tu dilo, una herramienta gamificada cuya metodología rompe los esquemas tradicionales de abordaje de salud mental y de una manera dinámica y divertida busca crear conciencia sobre el cuidado de su salud mental. El trabajo online se convirtió en un desafío muy grande para nosotros, cuadrando tiempos, reuniéndonos hasta altas horas de la noche, hasta que por fin fuimos combinando el trabajo virtual y el trabajo presencial. ¡Tú dilo! ¡Tú dilo! ¡Tú dilo! ¡Tú dilo! ¡Tú dilo! ¡Tú dilo! Nos dedicamos al proceso de validación de la metodología de Tú dilo. Esto consistió en aliarnos con instituciones educativas y con la academia para poder obtener feedback que nos va a ayudar a mejorar nuestra herramienta. Como parte de la experiencia inmersiva dentro del mundo Tudilo, él o la adolescente podrá personalizar su propio avatar. Esto en base a las habilidades que irá tomando a lo largo del juego que se verán representados como accesorios con los que podrá personalizar su avatar y mejorarlo en base a cómo se sienta mejor representado e identificado. La caja de herramientas Tudilo comprende de tres pilares fundamentales, el autoconocimiento, la identificación de emociones y el afrontamiento. Dentro de estos existen varios retos que fueron diseñados para que los participantes puedan conocer sobre el cuidado de su salud mental. Estamos con el primer equipo dentro de la Junta Provincial de Pichincha y estamos proyectándonos para crear un segundo equipo en la Junta Provincial de Loja. Nuestro sueño es poder expandir nuestro proyecto en toda nuestra sociedad nacional. El impacto de nuestra herramienta trasciende del tiempo de implementación y es una herramienta útil en cualquier momento, permitiéndole a los beneficiarios poder hacerle frente a diversas situaciones adversas en su vida. So something, something interesting about about this uh, um, about this this project is not only the not only the idea, not only the the gamified uh, product they designed for working on, on on young people mental health, but it's also the way in which they started making decisions they started empowering themselves to 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 lead the things they were doing at this moment this this team they are still working on the project it, it it's been like two years since the since the the moment they, they they won the limitless academy in that edition and they have reached the the whole country and they have now a national team and all of that was uh, managed by them so we not only proved that they can create an idea that can solve address some specific problem in the communities but at the same time we proved that through this program we can empower these young people to to lead things to make decisions to uh, empower them uh, to, to, to make some transformation or to promote some transformations in the national societies. So I'm going to look for the other one. The other one is from this edition. It's a different style of, of project, but uh, in the meantime, I wanted to know if you have any questions uh, about I, what I just showed you. So far, they're just saying, excellent, amazing. Uh, no questions at this point. 
Okay, so the, the, the other video I'm going to show you is a video from one of the teams that went to, that went to Geneva. This team is from Nigeria. Uh, this, this one is from the climate, uh, from the climate challenge. And uh, we love this team uh, for many things. The way in which they, they design the idea, the way in which they express about their idea, the way in which they have, in, have been impacting in their community. And when we saw them on the stage, on the, in the General Assembly, it was amazing to see both of them managing the, the whole, uh, the whole pe all the people that were there. They, they, there were like 400 people or, or, or so in that, in that room. And they had this amazing way of kind of capturing their attention and everybody was just watching to them because the way in which they sell their project is amazing. So I'm going to show to you the project from Nandom and Mercy from, uh, from Nigeria. Just give me a second. Uh, yeah, so it, it, it's, it's a little bit longer than the other, but the how they, they, they talk about their idea is, is, is amazing. Okay, so let me show again. Uh, okay, sound here and here it is. Okay, perfect. I guess you can see my screen now, right? I can see. It. Yeah, good, great. So uh, allow me to introduce you to, to Nandom and Mercy, these two amazing in innovators from Nigeria. Growing up in our community, we witnessed firsthand the struggles that women and girls faced every day to get firewood for cooking. This was a challenging task that had severe effects on them. They would carry heavy loads of wood over long distances and then use that wood to cook for their families. The smoke from the fire would fill their homes and we saw firsthand how it affected their health, causing them to cough and struggle to breathe. The constant need for firewood also meant cutting down trees we stripped our land of its natural beauty and contributed to environmental problems like soil erosion and climate change. But this wasn't the only issue. Another challenge we faced was the improper disposal of organic waste, which would often wash into our water bodies. These water sources, which we relied on for baiting, washing and cooking, became contaminated, creating additional health risks. Witnessing these hardships made us realize that something needed to change, something that was easy, efficient and wouldn't harm our health or the environment. That's when we thought of using anaerobic digesters to turn organic waste into biogas for cooking and the digesters for compost fertilizer. This solution not only provides a clean and sustainable energy source, reducing our reliance on firewood, but it also prevents deforestation and keeps our water sources clean. By transforming waste into a valuable resource, we found a way to protect our community preserve our environment, and ensure a healthier, more sustainable future for everyone. Designing the prototype was a hands-on collaborative process that we took on ourselves, driven by our deep understanding of our community's needs and the challenges we faced. We were determined to create a solution that was both effective, accessible, and affordable. We began by thoroughly researching existing technologies and best practices in waste management and biogas production. We then outlined the design, focusing on creating a system that could efficiently convert organic waste into biogas and compost fertilizer. We wanted the design to be simple and user-friendly, ensuring that it could be easily operated and maintained by anyone in the community, regardless of their technical background. As we worked on the design, we sought advice on the best materials to use. We consulted local experts, engineers, and artisans to ensure that the materials were not only durable, but also readily available and cost-effective. 
This input was invaluable in helping us choose materials that could withstand the local environmental conditions while keeping the overall cost low. We went through several iterations of the prototype, testing and refining it to ensure that it met our goals. We focused on making the digester as efficient as possible, optimizing it to produce a steady supply of biogas and high-quality digesters. We also made sure that the design was scalable so it could be adapted for different household sizes or even larger community-based systems. By the end of the process, we had a prototype that we are proud of. One that was tailored to the specific needs of our community, easy to use and built to last. The experience taught us the value of persistence, collaboration and resourcefulness, and it brought us closer to creating a solution that could truly make a difference in our community's health and environment. Testing our prototype was a crucial step in understanding its real-world impact and refining its design to better meet the needs of the community. These are some key findings and impacts from our testing phase. First is improved health and well-being. The prototype successfully provided a clean energy source for cooking, significantly reducing the reliance on firewood. This led to a noticeable decrease in smoke inhalation-related health issues among women and girls who traditionally spend a lot of time cooking. Secondly, environmental benefits. Reducing the need for firewood, our prototype contributed to a decrease in deforestation in our community. Also, the proper management of organic waste prevented contamination of our water bodies, improving the quality of the water used for bathing, washing, and cooking. Another impact is economic savings. Households using our biogas system reported savings on the cost of purchasing firewood or fossil fuels like kerosene. The digested produced by the system also served as an effective natural fertilizer, thereby reducing the need for chemical fertilizers and lowering agricultural costs. Lastly, empowerment of women. Our technology empowered women by reducing the time and labor involved in gathering firewood or buying, allowing them to focus on other productive activities. It also provided them with a sustainable source of energy, contributing to a better quality of life. Some of our findings include efficiency of biogas production. We found that the digester was effective in converting organic waste into reliable amounts of biogas. However, the amount of biogas produced varied depending on the type and quantity of waste used. This highlighted the importance of consistent waste input to maintain steady biogas production. Our last finding was from the user feedback. Community members provided valuable feedbacks on the system's usability. While most found it easy to operate, some suggested improvements to make maintenance even simpler. This feedback helped us identify areas for further refinement in the design in our near future. After all these findings and feedbacks, we aim to improve on our design and make it more user-friendly. Together, Together, we are limitless. limitless. I, I, I imagine that you can see why we we are still loving this this project. Uh, so many people might say, yeah, it's a it's a, another biodigester. And, and yes, the idea is a biodigester, but the real I innovation here is how they are using that biodigester to address many different complex problems. So you have here two young people uh, talking about very complicated things and trying to do something. So if you start looking for the for the videos uh, that participants send applying for the next stage, you are going to see many stories like this. And I would say that the most amazing part of being working or being leading this limitless project is to listen to their stories. It's impossible to get stressed or bored or, uh, or uh, disappointed or demotivated because you are constantly listening to these amazing stories. So, uh, yeah, that was or that is what we are doing now with Limitless Academy. Limitless is not only about innovation. Limitless is about empowering young people and through that, 
impacting communities and through that uh, making the life of these people better so innovation allows us to do that so yeah do that have, is do you have one more video you said you had one more video you wanted to show do you still want to show that yeah of course if we still have the time i can show the the yeah, extra, we have till the extra video. so yes please do if you have if you have the video yes, i love this course. so far henry this is wonderful yeah i i i, I i'm pretty sure that I, I I can share with you the the website the, sorry the the YouTube channel of the limitless uh, the limitless that would Academy. be useful really useful too that would be wonderful in fact we send a follow up email to those people who couldn't make it because we had sixty people signed up and they will they will also get the the video link as well yeah this 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 other one is uh, oh I I lost it just give me a second. Uh, While you have that second, somebody's asked when are the next round of applications open? Oh, okay, so uh, we are going to finish this edition of the Limitless Academy by uh, by May or June next uh, next year. So what we are expecting is that we can run uh, a smaller version of the Limitless Academy during the second semester of next year. Uh, and it's going to be a transition until we get enough funding for the uh, next big edition of the Limitless Academy. We are considering uh, opening these opportunities, as I said, for other, uh, for people that are not only Red Cross, Red Crescent, but we are also exploring the possibility to open a Limitless edition, uh, not only for young people, but also for, for adults. We have been uh, requested by many people adult people in different countries that uh, we give to them an, an opportunity to to participate in this in this program so we are exploring that uh, we are exploring that possibility uh, the other project i'm going to show you is the one i mentioned the one from from nepal uh, this the 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 young innovator is Pralisha Adikari, uh, and the work she did was amazing. Uh, recently, she got a scholarship from uh, the UK. How is the name of this scholarship? The it's a very famous one. It's a big one. Uh, ah, I forgot the name of the scholarship, but it's a it's a big one, and she got it recently in part because of the of the work she did with the with the work what the organics uh okay give me a second i forgot to share with with, with audio okay here it is so this is another of the amazing innovators we had in the limitless in the limitless academy actually pralisha is one of the peer mentors we had for this new edition of the Limitless Academy. So somehow she continued their, her innovation uh, journey and preparation. Namaste. I am Pralisha Adhikari, co-founder of Tower Organics Nepal Private Limited, one of the top second loved initiative of the Limitless Soul Farina Academy. It has been a year we have been legally registered and there, there has been so much that we have achieved in this year. Let me share you some of the results. We have piloted Tao Organic System as well as agriculture and urban farming in four public schools of Kathmandu in collaboration with the Kathmandu Metropolitan City, transferring these skills to more than 200 students. Our system has been piloted in one of the oldest hotels in Kathmandu and they produce their own salads to serve the customers. 20 of our system has been installed for self-sufficiency of vegetables in a residential house in Kathmandu. Three local governments have installed our system as part of their technology demonstration program. Our work has been covered by national newspapers and broadcasted through national radio channels. I was also selected as Summit Women 30 Under 30 for the year 2022, where I was able to showcase our work to the former Prime Minister of Nepal. 
As we move forward to generate more revenue for the organizations, there are a few challenges that we have been facing. And one of the main challenges is in the diversification of our product. We have also been facing a few challenges on its scalability. My journey at Tower Organics Nepal has been a transformative one, and I can say it is the same for my team. From not knowing anything about running an organization, we now hold strategic, me strategic meetings to push ourselves forward. We try and collaborate with various stakeholders in the country, whether local governments or NGOs or INGOs, and push ourselves uh, out of our comfort zones so that we can bring in more growth to the organization. One of the recent experience of mine was getting an opportunity to participate in the Y Adapt training of trainers at Maldives. Not only was I fortunate to discover the beautiful country, but I was able to share my journey of Tao Organics with youth volunteers and staffs from various Red Cross and Red Crescent societies. We had talks to scale this initiative in other countries like Bhutan, Pakistan, Maldives and the Malaysia as well. I cannot thank enough to the IFRC Limitless Soul Farino Academy for recognizing the vision that we have at Tao Organics Nepal. We are what we are because you believed in us and that was enough for us to start a vertical farming revolution. So, this is the story. That's wonderful, Henry. That's wonderful. And the other thing I was going to share with you is there's a question in there about Narom and... Um, Adom's background and his co-presenter co from Lauren. Okay, I, I don't know if you can you can hear me now. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yes. Ah, okay. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, it's because again my computer freezed. I don't know what happened, but no, uh, no worries. Uh, there's a question in the chat. It would be nice to know more about Nadom's background and why he joined Limitless. Same for his co-presenter. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you mean about background, uh, like uh, academic one? Lauren, do you want to unmute and tell or, and ask your question? Um, Hi there, Henry. This hey. is Lorene. I'm just enjoying you so much. You're the perfect person for innovation <laughs> with these young people. I love it. Oh, I love it. You. I love it. So, Nadom, his background meaning his community, his oh. culture, why he was oh, motivated, oh, what inspired him to make a change for the community, and then uh, introduction or her name shown as well. But sometimes culture and customs has a lot to do with that. But thank you, Henry. Thank you so much. No, thank you for the question. And, and yes, uh, actually, uh, unfortunately, we don't have that in video, but we have requested uh, to all the 105 people that, or people and teams that have been selected for the next uh, stage of the Limitless Academy, included Nandom and, 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 and Mercy, uh, to, uh, to, to record a short video uh, telling us something more personal on the why they choose the problem they choose. And uh, soon in the next couple of months, we are going to be publishing those videos and I really think the same it it would be really great to know what is the what is the uh, the motivations behind what they are doing uh, I guess there is another question no there is another question no there is um what I, the other thing I keep on thinking about the last question I wanted to ask you, Henry, before we, we stopped, unless somebody has another question. Have you thought of doing it? Like one of the things that the Red Cross movement does is work with forced migration, disaster, climate change, and armed conflict. And so have you thought about uh, having youth be um, innovative and, and work with the Limitless Project on, for instance, education on um, on uh, IHL or um, the how to uh, create more viable ways of restoring family links 
of reconnecting people who have been lost in forced migration, armed conflict, or disaster, or any yeah. of the, you know any of the other areas other than climate change. Yeah, actually, every edition of the Limitless Academy is about a different topic. As I said, in the first edition, we had uh, something about addressing the problems related COVID. to COVID-19. This yeah. time was about climate. And we don't know yet what is going to be the main topic of the next edition of the Limitless Academy. I guess uh -huh. that it will depend. So, somehow, it also depends on where uh where we do we get the 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 money for for funding the the program this time it was climate because of the importance of the topic but also because we get uh uh funding for for financing some for funding something related to climate but if we in the future get something about uh risk reduction or international humanitarian law or any other topic limitless can adapt to that to that, or uh, to I, those I was even thinking, I'm so sorry for interrupting. I was even thinking of measles rubella partnership, you know, which is having to do with vaccinations worldwide and saving lives. Anyway, my I'm just I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah, no, Please it's go okay. ahead, Henry. No, and actually, that is the beautiful thing about the Limitless Academy and about innovation in general. No, uh, it's that uh, we can adapt this to literally address any uh, challenge of the that the world is facing and the good thing is that uh, there is always going to be uh, young people or people in general uh, willing to do something to address those challenges and the limitless academy and that is what we really want from the limitless academy to make it that strong that any person can feel uh, safe enough to access here and, and to start doing, to transform the reality in the communities. So uh, in the future, we expect to share more information about what is going to be the next adventure for the Limitless Academy. And I, uh, we will be sharing more stories. Actually, I invite you to visit our YouTube channel, uh, the Solferino Academy One. Because in the Solferino Academy channel, you will find not only videos about the Limitless Academy, but also uh, innovation stories. Right now, we are uh, right now we are we started a series of videos that we are calling them mini cast, and these uh, mini cast are like. Uh, uh, little podcast from people from communities that tell us uh, what is the reality they are having in their communities. So I invite you to visit our YouTube channel. I will leave it here. Uh, you will find those mini casts in the very top of the of the YouTube channel. But if you are more interested in, I don't know, uh, youth things, you can go to the Limitless section. If you are more interested in digital things uh, uh, or, or in other kind of topics, you can keep scrolling. And I can assure you that you will find a video that will be perfect for you. The Limitless Academy YouTube channel will offer the exact thing you want, you you need to listen or you need to watch. So uh, I really hope that you enjoy this little this little chat. I hope it was not uh, boring for you, but uh, I guess that the, the most uh, important part of having this time with you is that I was able to share this. Uh, these uh, small stories from people and there are many 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 stories like the ones i share with you so thank you very much for having me here and i don't know if you have any questions are there any more questions before henry disappears i just want to thank you henry Oop. i think there's something in the chat um, thank you. There's lots thank of you. thank yous and hearts from people. Henry, thank you. Another thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Um, wonderful um, comments. Thank you so much. And I'm so excited you were willing to do this. It was so wonderful to hear you again. And you're invited next year once you know what the next topic is and bring in the videos. <laughs> once, 
floor. Yes, of course. Uh, that would be lovely. And um, I don't know what else I was going to say. Oh, I was going to say we have on December 12th, we have Carlo Heathcote, who is from Australia, and he's part of the Red Cross. Uh, he's senior relations for the IFRC and the ICRC. Henry, you probably know him, I would imagine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy man from... Um, I shouldn't say crazy. <laughs> I, I would say crazy. Crazy man from Australia in a positive way. Um, yeah. In any case, uh, he'll be on the 12th um, at 2 o'clock. Uh, oh, that's but, amazing. But I want to thank you, Henry, from the bottom.